Hello everyone and welcome to another super exciting and a bit esoteric and weird episode of Today I Learned with Billy. Uh, so today we are going to talk about making a uh, old school telephone cable uh, work within an existing ethernet structure within a building that has an analog phone line. Um, so what we're going to deal with is taking this uh, three or four conductor old school phone cable and making it work with a new RJ11 end that has uh, six conductors in it. Uh, so we're going to make a cable that has this six conductor RJ11 on one end and the other end is going to be this eight conductor RJ45. So uh, if anybody is stopping by, let me give you the colors real quick. So if you want to if you want to make a B standard RJ45 to 8 pair RJ45 B standard to RJ11 6 pair, here's the colors. Pin 1 is orange, pin 2 is green, pin 3 is blue stripe, pin 4 is blue, pin 5 is green stripe and pin 6 is brown stripe. I'll have that in the description below. Um so in a traditional phone line like this, which is an RJ11 that has four conductors in it, the traditional colors are black, red, green, and yellow. Now you can have two separate phone lines in this one cable. Uh, so black and red take care of line one, green and yellow take care of line two. Uh, so in this particular instance, um, I want to uh, get rid of this and make, make something custom because, well, I'm a bit OCD. So here's how I figured out the pinning on this. Um, if, if no one knows this, or if this is redundant information, a RJ11 will fit into an RJ45 jack normally. So what I did was I put this into my cable tester, ran a test, and noticed that the four pins in the center, three, four, five, six, are just wired opposite of each other. So pins, Pin three is wired to pin six, pin four is wired to pin five, pin five is wired to pin four, pin six is wired to pin three on a traditional uh, sense. So what I did was I made a chart like this and highlighted what my normal B standard is, starting with orange stripe, ending with brown and what my six conductors will be getting rid of orange stripe and brown. So we're getting rid of the first conductor and the last conductor, and we're only using the middle four. Um, now I made one of these cables already and tested it and it works out well. Um, so what we're gonna do here is, is start with our new cable um, because this is ugly. So let's just get this out of here. So what I did was I have a pull box of Cat5 cable versus Cat6. I tried making this initially with Cat6 and it was hateful. Uh, so I have some Cat5 cable and we're gonna, we're gonna use that. So uh, here's what we're gonna do. Uh, the first thing is I want labels on this. So I'm gonna pull out my heat shrink label maker. And I know that this is going into a jack labeled MDF10. So I'm gonna print that set that there and then we're gonna call this the fax machine name so it's just a quick acronym of the company name with fax so I'm gonna take my cable I'm gonna take a flathead screwdriver I'm gonna open up this heat shrink label here Get this guy on the cable. It's an optional step. It's just style points if you want to do it. I'm going to take my Ethernet cable stripper, go around that. I'm going to pull my jacketing off. I'm going to use my flush mount um, or my, my flush trimmers. Just get rid of this little pull string. And I'm going to flip out the pairs here. Okay, I'm gonna take my fingernail and I'm just gonna separate them. I'm 
I'm just pinching them between my index finger and my thumb, just straightening out all the kinks. So when you're doing this, it might be a good idea to uh, write down your order because it's going to be a little bit different. If you're used to wiring everything in a B standard, uh, which I've made about a million B standard cables, it might be nice to uh, write it down just so you remember. So I know that on this six pair RJ11, I don't need orange stripe because we start with orange. So I'm going to cut that just get that out of there. So I'm just going to take my uh, flush trimmers and just neatly cut that out. Get rid of him. And I also know that I don't need brown. So it's generally easier to cut these things before you terminate it. So I'm just going to get rid of that. That's going to go away. So to build the RJ11 side, we're going to start with orange. Then we're going to go green blue stripe. Some people call it blue white. I always call it blue stripe. So if you're hearing that and you're confused by what I'm talking about, it's blue white, uh, followed by blue, followed by green stripe, and then brown stripe. Okay. So when you've got your, once you've got your connectors pulled and, and arranged in the right color, I was just to look at it. I would like to look at it again and just make sure. So it's orange, green, blue stripe, blue, green stripe, brown stripe. So with my hands, I like to just pinch the cable between my thumb and my index finger. And then I like to make a little cut like this and get that. So an RJ11 versus an RJ45, if you've never crimped one of these before, which this is my first experience with it, is a, is a more shallow connector. So once I've made that first cut, I want to put it back just a little bit and just cut another eighth, an in, eighth of an inch or so off of that. I'm going to take my RJ11 end, verifying one last time, orange, green, blue stripe, blue, green stripe, brown stripe. I'll insert that into the connector. Verifying again for one last time. And I'm just going to push this up like that. I'm going to grab my punch tool or my crimp tool, get it in there. Okay and make the cable. Cool, so that end's crimped. I'm just gonna slide my little heat shrink label down. And now, uh, on the other side, we're just gonna wire this like our regular uh, B standard ethernet cable. And the reason why we're doing that is because all of the existing wiring in the building's walls are already following the B protocol. So you want as many of the pins on this one end of the cable to line up as as much as you can. Is that step needed? I don't know. I would assume that you can probably get creative with as long as all of your uh, pins match pin to pin. The color of the cable doesn't necessarily matter, but uh, for our sake, we're just going to wire this like a normal Cat5 or Cat6 or Cat7, whatever cable following the B standard. So I'm just flipping this all out again, just like we did on the RJ11. And even though we're not using orange stripe and brown, I still want them in there to make sure that we uh, we line everything up correctly. So we're just going to do this normally. So it's orange, orange stripe, green, blue. 
sorry, that's green stripe, blue, blue stripe, green, brown stripe, brown. So generally what I always like to just say out loud is that my, uh, it's always alternating between solid and stripe, which when you're doing the other end of the connector is weird because the last two are, are stripes next to each other. So it took me a minute to look at that and realize that it is actually correct. Uh, so again, we're just looking at it. So we get the crossover here, uh, orange stripe, orange, green stripe, blue, blue stripe, green, brown stripe, brown. So I'm going to use my trim my labels on there. I'm going to trim these back using my thumb and my index finger as a template. Cable length. I'm going to stick this in here. Checking one last time as our connectors go in. This is wired correctly and it is. Push my jacketing up into the cable. Do a little crimp. Okay. And then we'll test it to make sure that this works. Highly recommend making a phone call on the cable before you install it as a, in a customer site just to make sure that it works, but here we go. Okay, and I am reading three, four, five, six, and then backwards six, five, four, three. So that is how you make a crossover cable with a six pair uh, RJ11 into a eight pair RJ45.